Controlled Environment Plant Production Engineering and Technology Educational Modules. I am Dr. Jean Giacomelli from the Department of Agricultural and Biosystems Engineering at the University of Arizona. My colleague and I, Dr. A.J. Both from the Department of Environmental Sciences at Rutgers University in New Jersey, have put together this Greenhouse Glazing Educational Module. The presentation content will include the role and the design features of greenhouse glazings, some common types of greenhouse glazing materials, as well as their benefits and challenges of using those materials, and finally some examples of various commercially available greenhouse glazings. Our primary objectives in this module is to help you identify the different greenhouse glazing options, to describe the benefits and the challenges of these options, and then to be able to recommend an appropriate glazing option. Greenhouse glazing affects light transmission, but glazing is only part of the story. The goal is to get the sunlight to the plants so they can grow. To do that, the greenhouse is located in a certain area and is dependent on the local weather conditions, which change throughout the time of the year. And then the glazing material is selected to put on the greenhouse. But there are structural components to hold the glazing up. And there are materials inside the greenhouse as well as the greenhouse orientation, whether that's with the gutters pointing north to south or east to west. All of these contribute to affecting how much light is available to the plants in the greenhouse. You then have only a few choices to make on the type of glazing. That is, whether it should be glass or plastic, whether it could be rigid plastic panel panels or flexible film plastic, as well as putting it in as a single layer or a double layer. In addition, you can select special plastics that have additives and treatments to improve their physical properties, primarily to increase light transmission. And ultimately, you need to determine and know in advance the crops that you plan to grow. The greenhouse effect. Essentially, putting a glazing over top of a structure in sunlight traps solar energy. More energy enters into the greenhouse structure than leaves and as such the greenhouse air temperature increases. In the image we see the visible light being transmitted into the structure. We see some of the light that has been absorbed and warmed the interior of the greenhouse as leaving as long red wave infrared long wave radiation. The light may not all enter the greenhouse. Some of it is reflected at the surface of the glazing. The rest is then transmitted. Once inside, it can be used by the plant or absorbed by the structure. And then with the warming, it can be re-emitted and transmitted back out through the glazing or with special properties of the glazing, it could be reflected back in and then the temperature continues to rise. This is the traditional greenhouse effect, and it's very important for maintaining air temperatures in the greenhouse, and it is dependent upon the glazing that you select. The pathways of solar radiation include the travel from the sun of the radiation light, passing through the Earth's atmosphere, and reaching the outer surface of the greenhouse. Then it's transmitted through the glazing, and it must, the light must avoid the structural framework or any overhead equipment prior to reaching the plant canopy. Once in the canopy and being penetrating down into the canopy, it hopefully is absorbed by plant tissue and the energy of that photon of light then is used for photosynthesis, which is the basic energy system that process which provides the plant to grow. Greenhouse glazings in general, particularly in the U.S. and in many countries around the world, are dominated by plastic. Although glass was the original and traditional material, 
polymer plastics, particularly in the last 50 or 60 years, as thin films or rigid plastic panels have become very popular because of their availability and their lower costs. The selection is influenced by the structure, the crops grown, obviously the costs, the labor involved for replacement, and the environmental impact for both fabricating the material and ultimately the disposal of the material. There's three fundamental coverings of categories of coverings that we'll discuss, glass, plastic films, rigid plastic sheets and panels. Traditional glass. Glass is very long lasting. It has a great resistance to ultraviolet UV radiation and air pollution and has a very high radiation transmission. However, it is vulnerable to hail, but you can, with more costly glass that is tempered and annealed, increase its strength and its reducing its vulnerability to hail. Traditionally, the panels were very small size, but now they can be made very, very large, as much as 1.8 by 3.6 meters as one sheet. Maintenance includes periodic cleaning so that you maintain the high radiation transmission and the ability to keep it sealed tightly around its edges to reduce energy loss and to increase energy conservation. Traditional glass looks beautiful on a clear blue day. The clarity, it looks great to the eye and high transmission occurs because of the properties of the glass. To keep it clean, there are machineries that have been developed that automatically travel down these glazings roofs and brush and wash the glass, sometimes as much as one time per month on large scale operations. Other alternatives are plastics. There's the rigid plastics and the thin film plastics. The rigid plastics include polycarbonate and acrylics and polyvinyl chloride or PVC. Thin plastic films that are flexible are low density polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride PVC, ethyl vinyl acetate, which is a copolymer, and a very new one, ETFE. This can be installed in single, double, or triple layers. Very rarely do you see triple layers. Mostly film, plastic films, if they're not single layer, they will be air inflated double layer films. Rigid plastic panels are more expensive than polyethylene film, but they last much longer, maybe 15 to 20 years with less maintenance than polyethylene film. New construction and even older glass house renovations or end walls use poly uh, uh, rigid plastic panels. Acrylic, these panels may be acrylic or polycarbonate and their spacing bars to hold them are much um, less in strength and size than to hold the heavy glass panels. Therefore, you get less structural shading when you put up these kind of lightweight, whether it's flexible polyethylene or rigid structural panels. Acrylic and polycarbonate, they, they can be produced as double wall structures with a channel cross section. They're lightweight, the double layer increases heat savings and provides strength. The thinner walled structures can actually be bent into an arch-shaped roof where the thicker panel cross sections have to be maintained as a flat rigid panel. Acrylic has a slightly greater light transmission and it is a bit more expensive than the polycarbonate panels. Downside of polycarbonate is that ultraviolet UV radiation will discolor it. It takes many, many years, 15 to 20, but what they do is they co-extrude it with an acrylic coating to reduce, to increase the protection from ultraviolet degradation. This also comes in a single layer as a corrugated polycarbonate uh, single layer glazing. Um, the double layer has the potential for uh, getting condensation in between the, the channels and uh, the potential for some algae growth. And there's ways to prevent that. Um, we never want to have a fire, but um, acrylic does burn. 
and polycarbonate will self-extinguish itself. Examples of a new double wall acrylic wall on a greenhouse on the left hand side and a weather double wall polycarbonate on the right hand side. Probably on the order of 15 or more years old you see that it does lose some of its clarity but it lasts much much longer than polyethylene film which is only on, on an order of two years. Here's a single layer corrugated polycarbonate panels used on the side wall of a greenhouse. The thin plastic films, they're very reliable now. They initially have a low cost and they can be single or double layer, particularly air inflated for a double layer. What's great about air infiltration rates are reduced significantly because the film can be a huge continuous single cover as opposed to the separate panes of glass or the separate segments of the polycarbonate panels. As a result, the greenhouse air humidity can be much greater in a plastic film covered greenhouse than in a glass house, for example, causing more condensation to occur and dripping from the roof of the greenhouse. There's ways to re, uh, in, uh, reduce that problem with no drip films, with additives to make it such, to increase roofs, roof slopes, or to add a third catchment layer underneath the other two layers. Best thing about polyethylene, if it's kept clean, it can be recycled. It is and remains the most common covering, particularly in North America and many other countries around the world. It has a minimal, minimum useful life of at least 12 months and appropriately sized thickness to, to respond to that, or 24 months up to three or four years as well with more additives to protect it from UV degradation and thickness to give it more strength to last those extra years. Like transmission in general, for a single layer polyethylene is 90% and for a double layer is 80%. This can be manufactured in a number of ways with multiple layers having different properties, many, uh, sometimes as much as five layers um, put together, co-extruded, so that it can have different properties with each one of those layers. Some of these properties are essentially chemical formulation enhancements. EVA or ethyl vinyl acetate is added in small amounts to make it more flexible, particularly in cold weather. And when it's folded prior to installation, that there's no damage of the sharp folds when it's in the box. UV inhibitors are essential for polyethylene film to restrict the ultraviolet radiation degradation that occurs with polyethylene because of the sun and extends its useful life, as I said, as many as four years. An IR or infrared barrier can be added for energy savings or heat savings at night. It reduces the loss of heat by radiation through the polyethylene film and makes it similar to what traditional glass has always had, but non-traditional polyethylene has not had. Condensate control or an anti-drip interior surface prevents droplets from forming and in fact a hydrophobic um, uh, uh, situation occurs that makes the water uh, form a sheet and roll off to the side and not drip below onto the plants. And finally, wavelength selective transmission films can actually change the amount of different colors of the sunlight that is transmitted through the polyethylene and therefore change some of the morphological or the shape of the plants as they grow underneath. ETFE is the newest and the most expensive flexible plastic film. It has a very high light transmission at 95% single and 90% double layer. It also has properties similar to glass. It lasts for more than 20 years, even under high ultraviolet radiation degradation situations. The surface is somewhat self-cleaning, so it doesn't attract a lot of dust. Dust. It is significantly more expensive compared to other plastic films. It is relatively new. It's been used in certain parts of the world. Um, we still remains to be seen whether the, the additional cost 
will be cost effective in its use in the industry. Potential film problems. We talked about ultraviolet radiation causing degradation. Even high temperatures can reduce the useful life of the plastics. Um, air pollutants and pesticide pollutants in contact with the plastic can cause problems as well. And by overinflating, you can cause a permanent expansion of the polyfilm. One topic, diffuse radiation, can improve how plants grow. Diffuse radiation is the light that has been not reflected on the atmosphere of the glazing, or has been reflected on the atmosphere in the glazing as compared to direct radiation, which travels through the plastic as a direct beam of light and produces more shadows, where diffuse radiation produces less shadows. The benefits then are that plants can get more light ultimately throughout their canopy and use that diffuse sunlight for better growth and some greenhouse glazings like the polyethylene films and the flexible plastic films and even the rigid polycarbonates diffuse light more uh, intensely than the uh, clear glass has been done and doing for many many years. This is very beneficial for tall crop canopies to get light and improve yield into the lower portion of the plant. This image shows you some of the darker regions where the shadows are occurring on the plants. This is a clear glass with no diffusive layer to, um, to eliminate those sharp shadows on the lettuce growing on the floor of this greenhouse. Novel and special features for flexible plastic films include the colorization of those films with the ability to change the spectral quality of the sunlight that passes through the glazing with the color and in doing so it changes how the plant grows. It can increase the growth of the plant, it can improve its quality, it can change its morphology or its shape. Most recently photovoltaics have been tested to be embedded in the glazing with the idea that some of the energy from the sun would be used to generate electric power and provide a bit of shade to the plants below. But the remainder of the solar energy would be used to grow plants just as if it was a normal glazing without the embedded photovoltaics. Additional resources are available. Please go to our websites at Rutgers University Horticultural Engineering and at the University of Arizona, the CEAC Controlled Environment Agricultural Center website, as well as the glazing manufacturers put out a lot of good material about the, the, the benefits and the properties of their materials. And there's some technical books and writings that you can see available as well about greenhouse glazings. I'd like to thank you very much. Appreciate this opportunity.